What if robots generate all possible art, or almost all possible art? Does the generated content infringe copyrights on the earlier works created by humans? And what about works that will be created by humans after a robot has created the same or similar work? Will the works created by humans after this point in history be protected? Hi, this is Copycast by Claims, we are talking about intellectual property and related stuff. Here are me, Viktor Gorsky Machalov. And me, Anton Indrusak. And we are intellectual property lawyers who share uh, cool IP stories between our court hearings. Enjoy. To understand what will happen when robots generate all possible art, let's take a look at the story of Damien Real. And uh, this is the guy who generated all possible music just before AI uh, appeared? Not exactly. You again sound like a lawyer. <laughs> okay, not exactly, but yes. About three years ago, a lawyer, musician and IT guy named Damien Real did something quite remarkable. He and his friend Noah Rubin generated all melodies within one octave and made them available in public domain. Actually, he shared all of them under Creative Commons Zero license, which is quite similar to the public domain, but it's not the point. The point is that 68 billion uh, melodies, all possible melodies within one octave, were created. And his idea was to save musicians from uh, problems with copyright. Uh, it's, you know, quite a common story when one musician sues another because the melody in some part or maybe in whole uh, or identical totally or very similar. And uh, to defend against such a lawsuit, uh, the second musician uh, should prove that it was an act of uh, independent parallel creation uh, and uh, he or she has never heard uh, the op opposed work earlier. But it's almost impossible to prove a negative fact, uh, a fact that you didn't do something and the fact that has never happened. Uh, and that's what Damien said uh, on that for the copycast. Let's hear. In practical terms, a defendant cannot prove independent creation because in philosophy, as in logic, proving a negative is impossible. One cannot prove a negative logically. Um, therefore, a defendant cannot prove the negative of I have never heard that song. It simply cannot be done. So even in cases of legitimate independent creation, where the defendant legitimately never heard the other side and did not rely on the other side and did not copy the other side's work, in the US at least, and for music infringement cases, that doctrine is non-existent, at least for practical purposes. It's existent in theory, but in practice, it's impossible to prove because the defendant always has to prove a negative. So I would argue that while the doctrine of independent creation is a good one, two people can create the same melody uh, without having heard each other. Um, I think that the subconscious infringement, the George Harrison subconscious infringement, essentially thwarts the entire idea of independent creation. Therefore, uh, we, I think that the all the music data set that shows that we have mathematically exhausted every melody should go a long way toward eliminating the George Harrison subconscious creation precedent. So, uh, the idea of them in real was that once all the melodies were generated, anyone can argue that melodies are math and math is kind of facts, and facts cannot be copyrighted. And we need to add here that Damien acknowledged uh, that while melodies are important, uh, real music is much more complex than just a series of melodies. And I don't think we're even close to a world where every work may be created by AI. 
Um, I think that what we have done through the All The Music data set is not creating every work. It is creating every mathematical permutation of one aspect of musical work. So I want to make sure that it's known that that is a very limited uh, data set. Uh, music is more than just melody. Music is melody, uh, which includes both pitch change plus rhythm plus and melody also includes harmony and timbre and lyrics if there are some and many other aspects that makes a song a song uh, melody is merely one aspect of that song and that data set of melody is what we've exhausted thus far we have not exhausted uh, the other aspects of the song at this point so uh, that's for music alone and then to the question of whether we're in a world where every work may be created by ai i think we're also very far away from that i think that uh, there are some musical uh, programs that get close to having a reasonable facsimile of meeting what's called the Turing test. That's T-U-R-I-N-G test. And the Turing test is to be able to figure out whether it is a human or a machine. And uh, there are some softwares, for example, AVA, A-I-V-A, uh, comes to mind, uh, where um, some of the works created by AVA uh, might pass the Turing test, where you might think that a uh, human actually created them, even though it was algorithmically driven through machine learning or otherwise. Um, but the fact that a world where every work may be created by AI, I think that is a very, very, very long way away. Uh, it's perhaps not going to happen for another hundred years, if at all, before AI would be able to mathematically create everything, including Beethoven, uh, out of nothing. I think there are too many variables and too many factors that would make that uh, at least an impossibility, certainly for uh, the current day, uh, almost certainly for the near future, and probably not for a very long time. I find it interesting that in 2020 Damien expressed doubts that we are anywhere close to developing AI that can create true masterpieces. And welcome to 2023. From this point of view, it's clear that despite all the melodies have been generated, a new musical work with the same melody is a new and quite original work still. Yeah, uh, and uh, the plan of Damien Real was not to cancel or destroy copyright to music or something like that. He just wanted to stop lawsuits that are based only on the fact that melodies uh, in two songs or two works are the same. The question is, what happened next? Did the project of Damien Real and Noah Rubin change the world of copyright? And this is your question. Yep. And you are now going to answer it by yourself. Exactly. Okay, what <laughs> happened next? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> That's fantastic. Okay, okay, something happened. First, despite the amount of generated melodies was increased from uh, 68 billion to 470 billion, no one sued Denim. So, the bad news is that we don't have a funny case to discuss. Uh, okay, stop. Uh, why no one sued him? I mean, uh, it might be very easy. Uh, if you have copyright to one song, at least, it's very likely that some of uh, 470 billion of generated melodies are, uh, is totally identical to your melody. Uh, and uh, you can file a lawsuit, charge money, spend the money to create one more song, file new lawsuit, charge money again, again and again, and till the end, and so on, you know? Well, Easy peasy? <laughs> well, I think uh, that it's just a good illustration of why melodies themselves are not such significant intellectual property assets. I mean, okay, you have a melody stored on your web server, and it is identical to my melody. Why should I care? 
is completely not the situation when someone uses and exploits my work, so I don't feel any rights violated. But it leads to the argument that uh, usually using the same melody is not something uh, significant enough to sue someone for a copyright infringement. And this is the good news. It looks like after the start of all the music project, courts started belief in this idea a bit more. There were a few legal cases where courts said that common musical elements are not protected by copyright. Uh, what did you say? Common musical elements? Yes, uh, the basic elements such as arpeggios, chromatic and regular scales, etc. The most usual sequences of notes that have existed in music since its inception. Uh, they are all described differently in different cases. Uh, musical building blocks, common musical elements, musical commonplace. And the general idea is that some melodies are more like musical ideas and tools used to create works than creations itself. Uh, that sounds reasonable. Yeah, and this legal position may be found in such cases like Marcus Gray vs. Katy Perry, Ed Sheeran vs. Chorkri, uh, Skidmore vs. Zeppelin. And did courts mention Damien Real or maybe his projects and their decisions? No, and I think Damien might be a bit sad that in all these cases there was no reference to his project. For example, he talked about the Cat Bear case. The decision in this case was uh, reconsidered some time after the TEDx talk where Damien presented his project. And the court found that the coincidence of a melody was too small to defend such a small piece of work. So who knows, maybe it really was contribution of Damien Real, despite court's reference to some old cases from the 70s. Uh, okay, it's a cool story, but now in 2023, machines can generate much more uh, music with higher quality and pictures and poems and uh, even science articles, whatever. Uh, and it's not the final step yet, but now we see very, very clearly that AI can generate almost all possible art quite soon. Ah, uh, all possible art. I is it possible? Is there a limited amount of possible art? Uh, I don't know, but if yes, uh, it will be robots who prove that to us in some time. And I wonder, does it mean that uh, human will lose the capacity to create something copyrighted? What if we are the last generation who benefits from copyright? And after we die, I mean, after we die plus 70 years, more or less, depending on the jurisdiction, there will be no more copyrighted works. Robots will kill copyright. And intellectual property lawyers. And they will eat you. And you. No, 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 no. I'm going to start an IT career. Traitor. Everyone stands up from him himself. No, nothing personal, just a business. I want to have a career in IT too. No, 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 no. All the seats are taken and uh, so it's too late. Oh. Well, then I'm not agreeing. I mean, copyrights are supposed to protect works that are created by humans as an act of creativeness. So from the legal point of view, a piece of art generated by a machine and a piece of art created by a human being are different things. Maybe a piece of art generated by a machine may be uh, determined as math or effect, but a piece of art created by a human being is a work, a pretty copyrighted work, at least from the legal point of view. So it makes sense. Moreover, 
there is no legal requirement for a work to be brand new to get copyright protection. This requirement uh, exists in patent law, maybe in industrial design law, uh, but not in copyright itself. Uh, and uh, if you create something with your own creativeness, with your own uh, labor, it doesn't matter that something similar or even fully identical was generated before by a robot or a machine. Because copyright is intended, you know, to encourage create creativeness in people. What if AI can create all the art in two or even three dimensions, but it's the limit of AI? And AI cannot create art in four or even five dimensions. Stop, 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 stop. Five dimension art? What? Uh, why not? Uh, in addition to the traditional visual representation of art, mm, contemporary artists also consider the time dimension, it might be 4D, and meaning dimension, 5D, of their works. Works that exist over time can collect more and more layers that depend uh, on the time of audience. Furthermore, the meaning dimension of art considers the social, cultural, historical and political context in which a work of art is created. This dimension adds layers of meaning to the artwork that go beyond the mere visual representation. By taking into account the context in which a work is created, artists are able to create works that speak to a larger narrative providing insights into the society and culture of the time. For example, the work of Banksy, the anonymous street art artists, uh, often reflects uh, the social and political issues of the day, making uh, poignant statements of topics such as war, consumerism and politics. Through his art, Banksy is able to create a dialogue around these issues and raise awareness of important social and political problems. Mm, okay, I understand. And from this point of view, this new form of art challenges traditional copyright, which was created long time ago in the 18th and 19th centuries, and uh, it's not uh, equipped to handle the complexities of art in the 21st century. And uh, while AI can create beautiful works of art uh, in the terms of 18th century, it cannot yet capture the nuances and complexities of modern art. And furthermore, uh, copyright law in 18th uh, and 19th century was designed to protect the rights of creator of texts, uh, first of all, and maybe visual works, uh, but it's not adapted to the protection of the complex meanings behind the uh, piece of modern art. And AI may be able to create beautiful works of art, but it cannot yet produce works that are imbued with meaning and context. Uh, and as technology continues to advance, uh, it's important to consider how we can protect the rights of artists and ensure that their works are properly attributed and valued, especially in the context of their complex meanings standing behind the modern art. So, it's not a serious problem for copyright law if AI can create all the possible art. However, copyright lawyers should consider that art has evolved to include time dimension and meaning dimension, challenging traditional notions of copyright law. Maybe it's time to reinvent copyright law. Maybe it's time. And uh, you can follow us, and please follow us on any podcast service like Spotify, Amazon, Deezer and everything you like. And everything you prefer, see our videos on YouTube channel Copyrighted Dreams and uh, read our uh, posts in Telegram or in LinkedIn. And we will see you soon. Ciao! Ciao!